Thank you so much and welcome everybody. And guys, this is gonna be quick, but let's talk about a couple of things. You know me, if those of you have had me in training, I could talk for the next two days, uh, let alone a half an hour, but let's get you as many good best practices as possible. So we're gonna start with some fast finding. What's that really all about? And, and guys, that's really nothing more than get your hands on a record quickly. Usually a person who's on the phone, that kind of thing. But we'll go to some Boolean searching and we'll talk about save search. In all of these cases, it's meant for one reason, to buy you more phone time. The more things I could do as quickly as possible gets you more phone time, guys. So I'm going to bug out of here just for a second. I'm going to jump into my system. I'm on in a training system, guys. And let's talk Fast Find. Fast Find is to me part of the number one best practice. Some of you have had me in class have probably heard me say this, but when someone's on the phone, you, you get their record on the screen. So if John Sacerdote's on line two, guys, I'm gonna type in a little bit of the first, a little bit of the last name, no more than two space, three words. And if, I, I mean letters out of two words. And if you do two words, it's first name, last name. And it finds that person's record, look at this. So I could pick up the phone and say, John, what's going on? I haven't talked to you for two days, blah, 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 add a note and move on and make the next phone call. That's all there is to it, guys. So let's talk a little bit more about what Fast Find is capable of doing. First name, last name. Now I stop, my name is a perfect example because how would you type and spell my name? I can't remember if it's J-O-H-N, J-O-N, for short for Jonathan. So stop if you come to a stopping point or a, a guessing point stop because if you guess wrong it's not going to find the record and that's very frustrating i know he's in there but i can't find him you know that kind of thing so if i stop short give it a half a second and it'll start listing if i back off one letter look what it'll do it finds a lot more people that's why i don't want to do two space two i want to do two space two space three but it'll actually show you more and notice how they are color coded so these are placements this is a job this is a candidate this lighter purple is probably a lead or an opportunity, you know, that kind of the thing, guys. So the more you type, the more it narrows down the search. If you need to see these recs in a different light, instead of selecting a record, just hit enter and it'll take what it finds and group them accordingly into that type of entity. So you get, get to see more, but pay attention guys, because if you have placements, every once in a while it'll say, hey, you have more than the number of records, you, it, it's, you have more than 10 records. So let's increase the size to 15 and it'll show. Now there's no change because in each of these types of records, there's less than 10, but it allows you to see in a different screen more records at a time rather than through that drop down. I could immediately go back to the drop down, but by typing a little bit and going to see. So I get to see my record. So from the time the receptionist tells me that John Sacerdote's on the phone, guys, I'm going to say, John Sacerdote's on the phone. So I'm going to just quickly, <laughs> I'm the world's greatest typist. I'm going to go get the person's record. I call up his record. I've got the last 10 notes showing, and I could actually expand and say, John, I haven't talked to you since so-and-so. Did you ever have that meeting with the boss? And the guy goes, how'd you remember that? Off the cuff, guys. So it'll allow you to do that. Now, check this out. I'm looking at my phone. And it's a caller ID, and the phone number is 860-555-1244. I plug that number in, and it looks through the phone numbers, guys. Now check this out. So it'll find phone numbers. All you need is a minimum of six digits separated by at least something, a dash, a space, a slash. I don't do parentheses because it just takes too long to type them. You know, you have to hold the shift key down to get the open parens and all that kind of stuff. That's how I enter phone numbers. But it doesn't matter how they're stored versus how you search for them as long as you have some sort of a separator, separator being a space. So uh, as I look, look at this person's record, guys. When I go into this record, I look for 1244. Look at all the phone number records. So I've got 1244. Five one two four four as the primary phone. It will look through all phone numbers. And to prove that to you, you know, and prove it to yourself, just go into edit mode, guys. And there's all my phone numbers: four 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 five four six four seven. It will look for a phone number in as many phone number fields as you have active. I don't know how many of you knew that, but that's handy that it'll it'll actually do that. So I go back up here, right, and I type in just one word. It, one word, guys, it interprets as the last thing. Oh, look, all my cousins and friends and family and all that kind of stuff are in the system. But if I, if I typed in John, it assumes last name. 
So how do I get that to be a first name only, guys? You, you, you tell Bullhorn that it's a first name only. It's not a wild card. It's a signal to Bullhorn, the asterisk, that it is a first name. And now it'll go find first names. Interesting. So I could do first name only with the asterisk, first and last, partial. Type as much as you want, but if you're not sure, don't because you're just wasting your own time and, and causing a possible error. And phone numbers. Now, guys, it does other things as well. But let's leave it at that because we have to keep moving. Okay, so, so fast find. Uh, if I make 50 phone calls a day, I'm doing 50 fast finds unless the record's already over here and I know the guy's going to call me back. Okay, so I'm going to do a fifth. I'm going to do a fast find every single time I talk to someone. Interesting. And that just and it's, it's purpose in life, guys. A lot of people say, oh, John, wouldn't it be nice if it searches? No, it's meant to get records quickly. Nine times out of 10, a person. But it will, and I guess I'm going to tell you about it anyway, it actually will get jobs. But guys, if I see if there's any Oracle jobs, if I type that in, no, no, let's see if there's any test jobs. So if I go get test jobs, yeah, it finds people's names, but it also finds jobs. And there's all the, there's all the, the from test company, Brian test. So it looks at a lot of different things, guys. But when it's searching job titles, it only gets the open job titles because it's purpose in life is to get your hands on records quickly so that's what fast fast find is all about if we need to do more searching guys then we will go to uh, uh a, a better search of course so let's go get candidates and we'll talk about better searches so i'm going to get candidates guys the first my eyes are already over here because when this candidate list comes up, I'm looking to see if there's any restrictions. If there was a restriction on status, for example, or something else I searched on, guys, there'd be a big red button up there that says, hey, 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 you can't see all the records, you know. There's a restriction going on. And rather than me try to find them all, because they may not be here from the list, they may be from a search, let's just clear the whole thing. So when you start doing a search, make sure there's no restrictions. And if you want to see how many records we're going to look through, then you click the top button that it says. Now in our demo database, not that many records. That's that's a tiny database, guys. But the biggest one I've ever seen in my life, I'm actually working on right now, 8.4 million candidate records. And fast find is, 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 is as fast. So when I go to do a search, the first thing I do is I, is I look up here to see if there's no restrictions. And guys, the other thing, and this is a subject for another day, is get these lists in order that makes sense for what you need to do from your desk. This to me, these lists, guys, first and foremost, are a call list. So you darn well better have phone numbers there. And I mean in easy reach of the person's name. I don't want the phone number all the way off to the right that I have to scroll back and forth. So I've got this plus how many times I've talked to a person, notes is added, how long I've known them, when I most recently talked to the person. So what do you need to get your job done as opposed to recruiting versus sales, guys, you know, that kind of thing. So I may need to see different fields the way I work. If I'm the back office person, I may want to see where they're placed and all that kind of stuff. So you need to design these screens the way you want. Regardless, I have no restrictions here. I click on search and I'm going into my search area. And guys, there's there's actually three sections here. This you could flip into basic, which which frankly, and I'm telling you right now, I rarely use. OK, and I do that just because I can do more with Boolean logic searches. I can nest things that I can't nest when I'm in basic search. But but basic is is great for beginners. So if I want an Oracle person who also knows Unix, guys, I could click on that. And then and, and I'll tell you about that switch that affects both both advanced and, and this basic area in a second. That's not clicked right now. So that means it's going to search in more places. But when I run the search, boom. Now it's it's it, out of 8.4 million records, it's as fast. It, it floors people that the, that the search capability on this is that fast. And I use the score area because if I sort descending by score, the people with more buzzwords than the others are at the top of the list now. So that's the only reason I use score. So it'll allow me to see stuff like that. Okay, so let's go talk about in this search when I switch to advanced without this checked, okay, when I switch to advanced guys and I hover on the magnifying glass, that's where it's going to search. So if I put anything in here, okay, or in the in, in the basic search, 
it'll look through the ID, the name, the current company, the type, the title, the resume, the file attachments. It's the resume and the file attachments that mean the most to me, but it'll also look through the person's title too. But if I go back into basic and then click on that and then run the search as an example, if I go back over here and go back to see where it's searching, guys, look where it's searching now. Now it's only searching the resume. So when I go into, the switch happens to be in the basic area, but it does apply to both areas, advanced and basic. So it'll only search the description. That's, that's, that's internal geek talk, guys, for search the resume. So if I uncheck that, I'm likely to get more results. So when I run this, I, it'll just look in more places. And I, I could have seen how many records I've gotten, but nah, I didn't. Now, let me go show you a Boolean logic search and why that means more to me than a basic search. I could just do more with it, right? So if I go and I'm going to type in a search, guys, I've used this for years because it actually shows you everything that Bullhorn supports. So I could go Unix or Linux. Now, let me stop right there. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to nest that, put it in parentheses. So my second skill is Unix or Linux. If I switch to basic, I can't say that. There's no way of saying the second skill has to be one or the other. This way, it interprets it as it's got to be Unix, but it would be nice to have Linux. No, 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 no. It's not what I want. I want it to be one or the other. So I have to, and that's why I use logic, uh, Boolean logic more, guys. And, and by the way, I, I put my my connectors in caps just so I could see where I may have messed up. And then I'm, so this, this is everything. Just give me a second to type it. Um, and, and this is everything that Bullhorn supports guys. Okay. I'll quote that and then a not. And then because this is proprietary, this, this is not proprietary searching when we talk Linux, Unix. So we do not want anyone with the word Microsoft in their record. This is it. This one statement tells me everything. Anding and oring, parenthesis, which will do nesting, wildcards, which will find any form of the word manage, management, managerial, manager, managed, you know, that kind of thing. And quotes around phrases. So I'm going to look for VB or visual basic of people spell it differently in their records. But I don't want anybody from Microsoft. If I click on this, I look and I see, look, I have 14 records, guys. I go back. Let's get rid of the not Microsoft. Watch this. I bet you I have over 20. And I haven't rehearsed this part of it. So now that I look, that's because about half the records in the world, guys, have the word Microsoft in them. So if you don't want Microsoft, the word Microsoft in them, then you should include the not business, okay? Now I could further enhance the search, guys, by adding stuff from the field search capability. And that will actually go down into the actual record and look in that specific field and show you stuff like status equal to active or last note within 21 days. So that's kind of cool. And, and actually, I actually have done that. So let me just get out of here. I'm gonna clear all the search. Watch this, guys. Because the next thing I wanna talk to you about is saved searches. Things that you do over and over again, why would you not save them and save you all that time typing so you can spend more time on the phone? So what, what I'm talking about is I need people for Aetna Insurance Company that know Oracle, Linux, and Unix within a radius of Hartford, because that's where Aetna is for now. That, and, 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 and I need those people all the time, guys. So I've saved that search. So I click on it and it says, wait a minute, you have a different list. So I can actually save an associated list with an associated saved search. Guys, let me tell you a secret within a second. So I'll click, I'll click yes, and it goes and gets my, my people. What did it search on? Well, now that I've got my search executed, because all I did was save the actual search criteria, guys, I go back in, look what I searched on. I searched on all that stuff, but they have to be within an address of a radius of 10 miles of Hartford, Connecticut, because that's the zip code of Aetna. And I don't care when I when they were added, although if I wanted to see who was added since the last time I ran the search, I could. So that's why I leave that field there. But without any data there, I, it, it doesn't execute that one line. And then the last note within the last year. In other words, people I talked to recently, I want them there. Now, could I have done status not equal to placed? Sure. So I could get all the people that are not yet on assignment. That kind of thing you could do all the time, guys. So I can save a search from this long or complicated area of Bullhorn, the detailed search, guys. But what if I clear this whole thing? Can I, can I run a search from here? Yeah. Let me go get my candidates. Okay, so I'll get my candidates that are active. And, and obviously there's already just one there. Let me go get all my candidates that are placed. Let's see if there's any. So let's go back over here and let's go placed and like so. 
So if I want to check in, oh, I don't have any. So let's go to active and new leads, okay? Because if I want to check in on a certain group of people all the time, I could do that easily, okay? So if I look like so, there I get. So can I save this from this filtered list? Sure. So I go down and save this, and it's my active peeps, okay? And I go like so, and then I'll just save this, guys. And you could share this. Now let me show you something. I like this list, right? So if I clear this whole thing, and a lot of people don't even know you could pull this off. All right. I've got this list. And so someone asks me, John, how do I share this list with everybody? Do they all have to build this on their own? Actually, I used to say yes, but you don't have to. Save save a favorite search, guys. Okay. And, a, and it, it saves this list associated with the search. So when you save a search, so this is test layout. Okay. If I save that public, Okay, and, and let it go for everybody, all my groups. So now everybody has access to that search. They call up that search, okay? When they run that search, it's gonna say, hey, it's a different layout. You go ahead and say, yes, it shows you that new layout. You click over here, you save it. It is actually a backdoor way of transferring one list from one person to another. Who knew? That's what you get from when you play around with systems, guys. It'll allow you to say, I, and people say, I didn't know you could do that. I didn't either until I tried it. So interesting stuff. So if you want to have a beginning list, now, yes, there's other ways in administration to do it. But if you say, oh, I love that list. Can you share it with me? Just save any search using this list. Share it with the person. When they call it up, it'll say, hey, it's a different list. As soon as that list comes up, save it. Go to columns, create it, boom, 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 done. So it'll allow you to do all of that, guys. Interesting thing stuff all right so i can save searches okay from full-blown search guys or from doing simple filtering from the list now if i want to go back to searches did you ever notice this recent tab i couldn't tell you how many times i say guys you see that recent tab and people go oh well it remembers the last 10 searches you've done so on the fly you don't even have to save them it remembers and it tells you when you've done them too so obviously I've been rehearsing a little bit here. So it allows us to see, I've done all these searches today, starting at very early this morning. So it'll allow us to see what's going on. So you get the last 10, guys. So if I wanna go back to that Oracle and Unix search that I did at 1040, bang, there it is. And if you click back, it'll show you. All I did was I started with that to see if I basically had enough people, and then I narrowed it down to my most recent search of that one to get the four. Okay, so there's a lot of tricks, but guys, if you ever find yourself doing the same search over and over again, what the heck? Why are you saving it? Then you don't have to type it, especially for those evergreen jobs, guys, right? I always need five forklift drivers for this company during second shift, during these types of the seats. Save the search, and it goes and saves the records against the database, guys. I, I'm sorry, it goes and saves the search criteria against the database, and it'll execute it against the database anytime you click run. So you're always getting a fresh list. Now, some of the people might be the same, but if any new people are added to the system or existing records change that fit the criteria, they magically show up. That's what I love about all of that, guys. So it'll allow you. Now, let's go put, in the, in the last couple of minutes, guys, let's go put these save searches to use in one of the most important areas of your life. Okay, let's go menu and let's, let's go internal submissions. Now, the first thing you'll notice, guys, is I've drastically changed, and I'm gonna clear everything. I've drastically changed the columns. And the five columns that you must have are the date that the activity was added, what type of activity, who added this activity, because I'm already defensive about adding activity against my people, right, that kind of thing. And then the candidate status, the job and the job order and the job order status. Who owns the candidate, who owns the job? I could do the job, who owns the job by just clicking on my internal submissions, guys. It actually gets all of things related to your job. So with these five fields, and let me just draw it so it'll be in the recording. So if I go right here, guys, I'm talking date added, status, added by owner of the candidate and users because i could get the job order ownership those five give you everything you ever wanted to know about what's going on in your hiring cycle life so if i if i if i erase all of this guys here's what i'm talking about and i've already saved some searches first thing i want to do is say okay who applied against my jobs in the last three weeks i've got that saved 
So I'm going to go candidates applied to my jobs last 21 days. Boom, boom. That's who re responded on a web response, guys. I've got a lot to say about web responses, but we'll say that for another day. Web responses that you don't like, you actually should change to web response rejected. Because if you don't, you'll and, and you just say, no, that's no good, and I'll delete that guy, you lose the fact that the guy applied against that job, guys. So I want to be able to say, I he applied against that job, and I rejected him. He doesn't have the skill, you know, that kind of thing. So I, I never just delete a web response. I, I add to my list that the web response is rejected. Response reviewed means it's still pending to me. You could add that if you want. I, I usually don't need to wait to see if I reject them or not, that kind of thing. So guys, that's one. Another one is go get my all my candidates interviewing. Boom, boom. And, and how do I do that? I'm just doing that from filters. I'm getting my candidates. My logon is John Jeffries. Okay. And I'm going to get any of the interview columns, guys. So that tells me because what's listed here for each candidate for each job is the most recent thing that's going on. So these are all the pending scheduled interviews for of these candidates. Okay. That belong to me. Conversely, I could say, go get me everything that's going on with my jobs. So all I'm doing is going to get jobs that I own, okay? And you can see. So guys, from those five fields, I could combine any kind of activity I want, and it will allow me to be able to see all of that kind of stuff. So I could do web responses, and you could say, if you wanted to, I could change. Well, let's go back. I'll, I'll do activity uh, 21 days. If I see, I, I, I look when I was rehearsing this, right? So I can't say the last day, but you could. And if I save this to see who applied against my jobs overnight, nobody came up, nobody applied. So it doesn't matter. It's not a bad thing that you don't have records, but you'll begin to trust this. So guys, I could save this. So I'm gonna save the search and it's my my apps uh, uh, within, uh, within 24 hours. Okay, and I'll save that. So now I've got another one. So I clear the whole thing. I always start from all activity. And guys, this is all activity, all users in my organization. So if I go here, my apps, let's go see who applied applications within the last 24 hours, not candidates. I know the difference. So if I click right here, nope, nobody applied. Okay, let's go see who applied in the last 21 days then. Boom. Oh, okay, these are still web responses I haven't decided. If I want to bump these up to move to internal submission, nice, you can. But if I don't want to get rid of, if I want to delete these web responses, guys, I don't like using that because you'll lose track of the fact that this guy, Augustus, applied on that job. And you'll forget that over time. So I don't delete them. I change them right here in, in line editing to response rejected. So I can remember that that guy was rejected for that job. And you won't lose track of that history, guys. So, so that's what we're talking about here, guys. So let's go back to the slideshow and see where we're at. So if I went back over here, we did a little bit of fast finding. So we talked about fast finding, guys, to get our hands on the records quickly. We talked about Boolean searching, just a few tidbits in the time that we have. And we talked about how important it is to save searches so that we get, get stuff done. Okay? That's what I got. Question time. All right, uh, so moving right into the Q&A section, our last couple of minutes. Um, John, I tried searching for a contact's first name using the fast find, but I wasn't having any luck. Can the fast find perform a search on someone's first name? Absolutely, let's go back to that, guys. And remember, I had quickly mentioned it. And so it's all about, let's go look for someone. My wife's name is Sigrid, guys, she's, she's Norwegian, right? So every database I go in, let's look for Sigrid. If I look for Sigrid, it looks for people oh, that happens to find it. But if you want to narrow it down to exactly first name, guys, put that asterisk there. And then look, it finds her. Sigrid Lockwer, that was her maiden name. True, true, true Norwegian. <laughs> Not that you need to hear that. But it allows us to see. So guys, don't forget first name searches. Gotta have that asterisk. Now I could go like so and do any first names that start with SIG. I might find a few more. Look at that, SIG, sign terms, interesting. So see, it looks for words that begin with, okay? Signal Corporation, because it looks for companies too. It looks all through names for that. So yes, absolutely. Just remember that asterisk when you want to force the first name search, guys. Okay, next question. I ran the same Boolean search as one of my colleagues, but we received different results. Any idea what could cause this? 
Oh, that's a great one. Yeah, that happens a lot, guys. And and it really is always something that's happened between the two of you. You just didn't do it exactly the same. And it could be usually a status. It could be sometimes just my candidates. But when we go and investigate, when I when we're in a training class and we put this side by side, uh, and, and basically that's what you have to do. You know, because some criteria, like I added to my criteria, for example, if I go into my criteria and go get a recent search, I added my criteria might be the last note within the last year. And if I eliminate that, guys, how many more records will I get? Remember, I had four. Now I get those. So it's going to be something silly, but I guarantee you it's something different from what you did. And it's that way every single time. All right, next question. Hi, John. My team recently started working with saved searches, and one of my colleagues would like to know if he makes a search of his public, can anyone delete it? Ah, that's a good question. Guys, no, only the author, the creator, can, can share it or delete it, regardless of visibility. So you could share a search, and, and, and people can look at it, but they can't. So as an example, guys, look right here. So if I go to my favorites, look at all these shared favorites. I can't get rid of those. These up here, which are mine, I can. And you can see by the little X. So I'm not the author of that, so I don't have the right to. But And if you say, well, I don't want that on my list. Well, you know what? That's That's life. It's shared. I can see it. Just pay attention to what's up here. So no, only the author can can uh, can uh, can delete it, guys, uh, regardless of who can see it. Okay. Next question: um, If I search by number, does it matter if I use space, dot, or dash? Uh, it does not. So guys, watch this. Remember, we did eight six zero space, and last time I did a dash five 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 space one two four four. So I could do that, and it finds me. So it's as long as there's some sort of separator. E Either a space, a com, uh, uh, not a comma, guys, a space, a dash, although a comma would probably work. Uh, uh, I've never tried it with that, but a space, a dash, or a um, uh, a dot. They'll all, any kind of separator. Let's try it. Hold on one second. See, and, and guys, this is how you learn. So will it work? No. See, it doesn't like commas. So that's that's the learning experience. But if I go back over here, put the space there, and if I even put a dash here, it's going to find me. Oh, yeah. See, so it doesn't matter what the separator is other than a comma, guys, which we've just discovered. OK, I think we have time for one last question. Uh, so real quick, are all capitals required for and and or? Uh, that's a great one, guys. And the, and the answer is no. It'll look at them with upper or lower case. I I had a, a class years ago, guys, and the person then it always stuck with me. The person said, it's easier, John, for you to see where your separations are if you use caps. That's just my habit. So it does not matter. It'll still do the same search with upper and lower case. I just like using the the, the caps uh, because it doesn't care when it's looking at the words if it's upper or lower case. So the caps just tell me where my separations are. It's just easy for me to see visually, but it does not matter. You could use upper or lowercase. That is an important question. So that was, a, that, thank you guys for asking that. That was a good one. Awesome. Thank you, John. I think that's all the questions that we have time for today. So as a quick reminder, we will be sharing a recording of the webinar in the next 24 hours, and we'll follow up with any questions that weren't answered during the Q&A segment. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, guys. Take care.